Hey, comparative politics class. So, I just got back from the awards ceremony, and it turns out that I have been crowned world's greatest comparative politics professor. So, thank you so much for voting for me. This couldn't have happened without all of your support, and I'm just so excited. I, I want to thank my mom. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. I'm over it. Got a little emotional there. Uh, so this is Comparative Politics Lecture 4.1. This is meant to be our workshop. So hello, welcome to our second workshop where we were supposed to be going over some different uh, cool sources for um, uh, public opinion survey data. So in comparative politics, this is a really fun aspect of, uh, very, very important, very useful aspect of doing comparative politics. The idea of, it's important that we know what people think, that we compare how people see their institutions. What do you think about your government? What do you think about the judiciary, about your president? How do you rate the way in which services are provided to you in your country? And this is really important. It's important that we have people out there engaging in this type of research, not just in times of elections, right? Because we hear, we hear about this all the time in the case of the US in terms of elections, all this polling data about who are you gonna vote for and why. There is so much more. There's a universe of questions that you can do that you can talk about with people in terms of polling them for their opinion about their government, their economy, local government, national government. And so uh, I just want to flag a couple of sites for you here. Hopefully this will be a pretty short video. You're not going to see my face as much in this video. I'm going to be doing, uh, it's, it's very tedious for me. Please, please bear with us. Um, it, it, this has been tough. This has been really tough for professors. And this type of lecture in particular is very tedious. It's a lot of screenshotting for me. It's a lot of editing that's going to have to go into this video. So. Thank you, thank you for your patience and um, uh, bear with me. But so yeah, we're gonna dive into a couple of sources here. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple quickly uh, that are I'm less familiar with and they're not as sexy as some of these others. So first I wanna start with, um, we're gonna start with Asia Barometer. So I'm gonna pull up what the home screen looks like here, Asian Barometer. So all of these sites are barometer sites that are public opinion sites. In the case of Asian Barometer, um, you can go here. Um, it's not as user friendly in terms of having a lot of interactive materials that you can use. But what is nice, the same thing I've shown you with a lot of these sites, there's all the material you can get here with publications. The publications are very useful. So if you're interested in doing for your comparative paper, some cases on Thailand, Singapore, Laos, Vietnam, whatever, you can go in here and look at what have they already published? How have they used their public opinion data in terms of their working papers, policy reports, conference papers? Scroll around. This is a nice place for you to get data resources that you can use in your own papers that would be about public opinion in Asian countries. So this one, this is here. That's what I'll say about this. Asian barometer is here. In my personal opinion, it's not as sexy. It's not as user friendly, but it is there if you are interested in Asia. Same thing's gonna go with this next one, LA Pop. This is the Latin American Public Opinion Project. I don't know what's going on right now. It's kind of weird. At the time I am attempting to show this to you, for whatever reason, their online analysis site is down. So we can check this out again later. For some reason, it's not letting me take a look at it and show it to you and do anything. So again, I'm gonna just kind of tell you this one's here. It's through Vanderbilt University. Same type of thing applies though. Always be checking out reports. They do study by country, study by year, regional reports. Um, data access. You can access the data if you're wanting to look at it. They're just, for whatever reason, they have, they have an online uh, interactive system. They call it SODA, System for Online Data Analysis. Um, it's available in both Spanish and English. That's nice about this site as well. 
but you can check this one out check out um la pop so i'm going to pause there take a minute we're going to come back and do the last one the barometer that actually is the coolest the most interesting so uh pause the video take a stretch and i'll be right back with you in just a minute Okay, so welcome back. Before we dive in here, I want to take a quick second and say that the magic word is tomato. Tomato. Tomato is the magic word. You need to know that. All right. So this last site I'm going to show you, this is the one that I'm most familiar with and it is the coolest. It is called Afrobarometer. So this is public opinion data 1999 to 2019 for the African continent. And here I can actually show you around quite a bit because it is very interactive, very cool. Similar to the Varieties of Democracy website that I showed you in the first, um, the first program, uh, the first workshop that we did. So if you're on, this is what the homepage looks like for Afrobarometer. So you can obviously go to about and learn more about it. You can go and look at countries, summaries of results for countries. If you want to see what the surveys are, because sometimes the surveys vary slightly within the different countries, you can go and look at when, when they're scheduled to go, what the questionnaires are. Same thing here too. You can access the data. This is public, free access. You can download all of this data for yourself and analyze it. What I want us to go to is online data analysis, okay? So we're going to go to online data analysis and then we're going to go to analyze online. So this is going to take you to their very interactive online data analysis tool. So what we can do here, this is all totally customizable depending on what you want it to do. So you can change languages. I know some of the people in the class are uh, Spanish and French speakers. You can change the language if you want, and you can do this completely in Spanish. You can do it in French. So step one is you need to select a survey. I believe there is an option as well that you can look across surveys, um, but in this case, we'll just pick 2016, 2018 here. We're gonna select a survey. So then what it will do for step two is if, if the country is shaded out, so picking 2016, 2018, you should notice that three are shaded gray, Algeria, Burundi, Egypt. They were not in this wave of, inter of surveys. They were not in the 2016, 2018 wave. So any of these other countries that are in black, you can pick and you can look at. You can pick multiples, you can pick just one. So in this case, let's just pick one, since it's the one I'm most familiar with, let's pick Malawi. And let's say, see results. And it's gonna take you to the result page for Malawi. So here what you can do is you can look. So if you know what you're doing, you can search by question. You might even be able to put in a keyword or something and take a look. But if you look at the left here, it's showing you the survey topic overview. So there are questions about equality and gender, ta taxation, crime and security, corruption, economy, democracy and politics, institutions and leaders, all right? So you can go through here and click one of these. Let's click institutions and leaders. And so then it's gonna pull up all the questions that they asked in this round of the survey to Malawians about their institutions and leaders. So they have it broken down here by the presidency, members of parliament, local government officials, courts and security, and others. So if we just go in here and say, let's pick performance of the president, we're gonna click that one. And so here it's gonna show us the question that they asked verbatim is, do you approve or disapprove of the way that the following people have performed their jobs over the past 12 months or haven't you heard enough to say and then they fill in the name and say president so in this case it would have been they they're giving the example here of uhuru kenyatta but that's for the wrong country so the president in this case it would auto populate and say peter mutarika so the question is do you approve or disapprove of the way peter mutarika has performed his job in the past 12 months so now look at this 41% of Malawians 
strongly disapprove of the role that Peter Mutarika has played, his performance as president, okay? 41%, that is a majority. Look, the next closest, 25%, is disapprove. So you have overwhelming consensus. 66% of Malawians disapprove to some degree with his performance. They do not think he is performing well. What you can do here, again, see how you can go up here and cross by. You can cross by and we could say, I want to look at this by gender and see if that makes a difference. So here what it's going to show you now is male-female. What do we notice here? Females have an even more negative belief in his ability to perform his job. Females are harsher against him than males. So we could go in, we can add a filter again. We could look at education, right? Education here, the expectation would be the more educated you are, the more likely you are to be informed about government and the way that it functions. So the more likely you are to hold a negative opinion of your leaders. Strongly approve is purple. Strongly disapprove is orange. So if we go to university completed, strongly disapprove and disapprove is overwhelmingly the majority, okay? So you can, you can either look at it using the little graphic that they have, or you can look at it using the numbers, the, the, the uh, table that they provide to the side. So the table here, yeah, I'm looking at it now. So university completed, 59.9% of Malawians disapprove, 36.3% strongly disapprove. So that is overwhelming majority. Less than 4% of people with a university education in Malawi think the president's doing a good job. All right, so that should be telling you something about the performance of this president, that people who know better have absolutely no faith in his ability to perform his job. All right. So you can see here that not only can you analyze the data in this way, but the same as with our world in data, the same as with varieties of democracy, you can download and you can save this information. So you can um, save the table, you can save the chart or the graph, you can also do things like tweak it, you can, um, you can play, with the, uh, play with the way that it's presented to you. So let's do another example here. Let's do, because this, this one with um, uh, the education is a little bit messy to see with that table. So let's go back to, here I'm pulling it up here. So let's go back to, this time I'm gonna go to um, corruption and I'm going to do corruption members of parliament. All right, so this is how many of the following people do you think are involved in corruption or haven't you heard enough about them to say? Members of parliament. So in this case, 36% of Malawians say some of them are corrupt. 26% say most of them are corrupt. 17% say all of them are corrupt. 17% of Malawians are saying you can't trust an MP as far as you can throw them. They are all corrupt. So what you can do is you can either do, going back to the top here, you can either do it so it's a, it's a bar graph with the bars going up, you can transition it so it's a bar graph with the bars going to the side, or you can do it as a pie chart. So depending on what type of graphic that you want, and then to save it, all you have to do is click with the, with the magnifying glass and the plus sign, click the magnifying glass and the plus sign, and then you can save it. You can save it as a PDF, you can save it as a picture. You see the little picture, um, the camera or the PDF, uh, in this case, it, it's not as ideal, I don't think, for you to save it as an Excel. You can do it as an Excel because then um, if you know how to use Excel, then you can be adding a legend and things like that and a title, but it's just as easy to kind of fudge that in a Word document. But so you can save it as a picture and pop it right into your paper. So I hope this is cool for you. I don't want it to get too long, uh, this video to get long, but what um, just other things that you can be thinking about here, just in terms of navigation, the arrow here is going to take you back just one screen. The house is going to take you back to home. So the house is going to take you back to the screen we were on initially where it's back to select a survey, select countries. Okay. 
And I just want to show you quickly here the fact that you can select, let's stay in 2016, 2018, but let's pick two or three countries this time. So let's do, let's do some West African countries. So let's do Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and let's get Senegal here. So we'll do Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Senegal. We've picked those three. And this time let's do a question about the economy. And we'll say, how often do you go without water? All right, so how often do you go without water? This is averaging them across the countries. So across these three countries, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, 53% say they never go without water. That's good. We could compare this to something like Chad, Mali, places that are in the Sahel that are dealing with this more, more um, uh, uh, seriously, never going without water. But 6% of people are saying always across these three countries, there is always a shortage of water. All right. Okay, so I hope this was interesting for you. Just like the, the other sites that I've done, um, this can be a little bit of a rabbit hole because there are so many questions that you can look at depending on what your interest is. So if you're interested in police, you're interested in human rights, you're interested in gender, education, the economy, there's all these different avenues that you can go and you can be really, it can be really um, uh, reflexive to your needs that you can pick the countries you want, you can divide by gender, right? You can divide by education, by age, all of these different um, aspects, which makes this a really cool site. It's very user-friendly, it's very cool, and it lets you understand a ground level understanding of what is it like to live in these countries? How do you see your government? How do you see your economy? Do you trust your police will come and help you if you had a problem? Right? These are really important questions for us to be able to answer as comparative politics, uh, 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 comparative students of comparative politics, to dive into a country and say, what is going on inside this country? All right, I don't want this to get too long. There's two more that I'm gonna link down below for you to look at. We're gonna talk about them in upcoming lectures and they're also just ones that you can explore and look around. So the two that I'm gonna link down below are the Fragile States Index, and the Human Development Index. All right, so in a couple of lectures, we're gonna be talking about both of them, um, but those are two more that you can be looking at. These are not public opinion sites, they're just cool public access data sites that I think are gonna be of interest to you. So let me know if you have any comments, any questions, anything you want me to know, you can talk in the video, uh, uh, video comments, or you can also email me, happy to chat about this. So have a great day.